My name is Robert Frank. I'm a radiology resident from the University of Ottawa, and I'll be reviewing our publication in the Journal of Magnetic Resonance Imaging entitled Association of Accuracy, Conclusion, and Reporting Completeness with Acceptance by Radiology Conferences and Journals. The funding organizations listed here, as well as the conferences and journals evaluated, had no influence on the study execution or interpretation. I also want to acknowledge that the work presented today was a major undertaking that was made possible by the hard work of a diverse team with international representation from various institutions as listed here. For today's talk, we'll start with a brief background discussion of research reporting and types of reporting bias that can occur, touch on the main reporting guideline for test accuracy research, then we'll dive into the details of the study and emphasize some key takeaways. Let's start with some background. The reporting of scientific research is a multi-step process ranging from planning and protocol development to submission of an abstract or manuscript to conferences or journals, followed by the possibility of citation and synthesis in reviews or guidelines. Reporting bias occurs when the magnitude or direction of a study's results has undue influence on the likelihood of publication, time to publication, or number of times cited. For example, let's say 10 high-quality studies evaluate the accuracy of ultrasound for diagnosing appendicitis. Assume that half of these studies conclude that ultrasound is highly accurate, and the other half find that it's suboptimal. Now let's say that all of the positive studies are published within six months, but it takes up to a year for the remaining negative studies to be published. This results in timeline bias. If some negative studies are never published, this is considered publication bias. Among published studies, if positive findings are cited more often, this can result in citation bias. In all of these cases, the published literature provides a falsely optimistic view of the accuracy of ultrasound. Some of our recent work has provided evidence for the existence of reporting bias in imaging research. We've shown that studies with positive conclusions and higher accuracy estimates are cited more frequently and are also published more quickly. We also know that conference abstracts with positive conclusions are more likely to achieve eventual full text publication, suggesting that publication bias also likely exists in imaging research. Now let's take a closer look at how publication bias can occur. It can result from selective reporting of positive findings at any step between project completion and presentation or publication. To simplify this, I like to divide the potential sources of publication bias into two levels, pre-submission factors, such as the author's decision to write up, submit, or resubmit, or editorial level factors, which is basically the decision to accept or reject submitted studies. Preference towards positive studies at either of these levels can lead to research waste with disproportionate waste of negative studies. When it comes to reporting of primary diagnostic accuracy studies, an important concept to be familiar with is the Standards for Reporting of Diagnostic Accuracy, or START, which is the 30-item checklist of the minimum essential items to be reported in order to allow readers to assess generalizability, applicability, validity, and potential for bias. These guidelines are widely available, open access, and strongly endorsed in the instructions to authors from most major radiology journals. So one would expect the adherence to this guideline should be a key element of successful publication. So it may come as a surprise that published primary DTA studies still have serious deficits in reporting based on START. Okay, so why does any of this matter? Preferential or expedited publication of positive findings can skew the balance of the published literature, resulting in overestimation of test accuracy. Incomplete reporting compounds the issue by preventing critical appraisal and risk of bias assessment. Ultimately, there's potential for adverse clinical outcomes for patients. So in an ideal editorial process, studies with more complete reporting would be favored for presentation and publication, while positive results and conclusions would be irrelevant to the success of submissions. So the objectives of this study were to determine whether submitted primary diagnostic accuracy studies with positive findings are more likely to be accepted for presentation at radiology conferences and be accepted for publication in radiology journals. In answering these questions, we can determine whether there's a high risk of publication bias at the editorial level or by exclusion if selective publication is more related to author level factors. We also determined whether the completeness of reporting according to the Start for Abstracts guideline is associated with acceptance in order to determine whether the editorial process appropriately evaluates, enforces, and rewards optimal reporting practices in accordance with their expressed endorsement. Now on to some methodology. After contacting multiple major radiology conferences and journals, we obtained access to abstracts submitted to ESCAR and ISMRM, as well as manuscripts submitted to radiology and JMRI. We screened submitted materials to include primary imaging diagnostic accuracy studies that reported sensitivity and specificity. 
Our main variables of interest were Yoon's index, conclusion positivity, and the number of reported start items. We extracted data for the potential confounders listed here, all of which have previously demonstrated some association with the reporting and dissemination of test accuracy research. We performed a multivariable logistic regression to obtain odds ratios for predicting acceptance to conferences and journals. For accuracy estimates, we evaluated the effect of Uden's index above 0.8 compared to a reference group below 0.8. For conclusion positivity, we evaluated the effect of positive conclusions with or without a qualifier compared to a reference group comprised of studies with negative and neutral conclusions. We also controlled for any potential confounders that were deemed statistically important. In the end, we screened over 36,000 studies for inclusion in order to reach our target of 1,000 conference abstracts and 1,000 journal manuscripts. Here's what we found. Submitted studies with positive conclusions or higher Uden's index are not more likely to be accepted for publication in journals. In fact, negative and neutral conclusions actually seem to paradoxically favor acceptance for publication. An important observation is that the submitted studies in both groups were overwhelmingly positive in terms of conclusions, and this is disproportionate to the number of studies with a Uden's index above 0.8. Similarly, Abstracts with positive conclusions or higher Uden's index are not more likely to be accepted for presentation at conferences. And again, we see a disproportionate number of positive conclusions relative to high accuracy estimates among the submitted studies. More complete reporting of abstracts was not associated with the higher likelihood of acceptance by conferences or journals. There's a couple of key take-home points that we can draw from these results. The results of this study suggest that the editorial processes of the journals and conferences evaluated do not contribute significantly to publication bias. Instead, our data indirectly suggests that publication bias in imaging research is related to factors occurring prior to submission, where researchers might be more likely to submit studies with findings that they interpret as positive. So based on our data, it appears that eliminating author-level stigma surrounding negative results might be the most important intervention to reduce publication bias. We should all submit our research to conferences and journals regardless of the outcomes. Educating the academic community that journals are not necessarily biased towards positive results might be the first step in achieving this goal. At the editorial level, perhaps interventions such as two-step review, registered reports, blinding of reviewers to study results, or dedicated negative results journals could also encourage researchers to follow through on their research regardless of the results. While the first conclusion is reassuring from an editorial perspective, the results of our study also suggest that perhaps the editorial review process does not enforce the standards of reporting outlined in the START 2015 guidelines, despite the expressed endorsement in their instructions to authors. As the gatekeepers of scientific quality, the editorial review process might need to place more emphasis on completeness of reporting in DTA research. Considerations could include mandatory submission and reporting checklists by authors and reviewers, or formal training of peer reviewers to seek out key elements of research reporting and identify reporting deficiencies. So to briefly summarize, we did not identify any evidence for preferential acceptance of positive studies by the evaluated imaging journals or conferences, which is reassuring. However, we also found that completeness of reporting does not seem to influence the likelihood of acceptance, which might indicate that it's an undervalued parameter in the editorial process. Further research is needed to evaluate the impact of interventions at the author and editorial levels to minimize bias and maximize quality in the evidence that guides patient care.